Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow Game. Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you are here today because oftentimes we invest a significant amount of time figuring out what to do with our time. My question to all of us is, do we spend enough time figuring out what to do with our money? Other things it can do, meaning you know that you have a there's a minimum wage and there's something you're willing to do for a certain price or your product or service is sales for X number of dollars, etc. Have you ever considered making sure that your money is treated with the same intention and fashion? I have with me today someone who considers themselves the anti financial advisor, which should be exciting for most of you, because I do know he likes a lot of real estate. But most importantly, he's helped his clients increase their cash flow by about $200 million. Think about that for a second, because what that means is if today you're experiencing less cash flow than you'd like, meaning money that comes in without you having to go to work physically, if you're experiencing less of that than you'd like, then you're going to want to make sure that you pay attention, make sure that you listen, because at the end of the day, who knows, he may increase your cash flow. Too. I'm, of course, talking about Chris Miles. You probably know him either from MoneyRipples.com or his own podcast, uh, the Chris Miles Money Show. Here's the thing. Listen, because right now, every dollar counts. You and I already know this, but most importantly, we're going to learn from him of how to make them count twice. I think that that's really what we want to do. So let's go ahead and listen, love, and learn, Chris Miles. Chris, how you doing? Awesome, Jane. Good to be hey. on, man. Uh, going pretty good so far. Pretty excited about life and how things are actually turning out. Uh, <laughs> but there's a lot of work involved. There's so much work involved. Now, you have been here before. It's been a while. Do us a favor. Um, update us. What's changed? What's new? What's going on in your world today? Let's see. I think the last time I was on the show was about five years ago. So uh, since then, I was able to retire for the second time. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time I retired when I was 28. And then uh, I was working to get my, ever since going through the recession, you know, went from millionaire to upside down millionaire to the recession, right? Mm -hmm. And then dug back out of that. And then uh, December of 2016, I was back at the point where I was out of the rat race again, you know? So, um, and then I, I kind of went through this phase of, okay, I'm 39 years old. What am I going to be when I grow up, right? And yeah, I know all about that. You know, and I, kept, I, I really decided like I'm always an educator at heart. So I just kept going, kept doing my podcast. And uh, I'll tell you like the last few years, it's funny. Anytime I try to retire, people want to pull you back out, right? Because people are like, well, how did you do that? Like I want to be able to get my money working for me. So I don't have to keep working so freaking hard for my money, right? Or um, you, know, you talked about, you know, double dipping on your cash. Like how do I get my money to pay me twice and things like that. And so I had several investors, you know, say, I, I want you to teach me and my followers how to do that stuff. And so um, I, I, I did make a rule though. I was like, no more 50 hour weeks. Mm. I'm going to be working like part time, you know, uh, I started out being five or 10 hours a week. And now lately, especially with all the stuff going on in the world, it's, it's pushing like 20, 25 hours a week. And I know that sounds like I'm whining, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's I a mean, hashtag super plus first world problems. Right. But yeah. yeah. But, you know, that's the thing is like, I never wanted to be full time again. You know, I want to be able to do what I love and enjoy it. And, and that's the thing is like, I, I love the fact that what's going on right now in the world, like what I'm seeing is, is fun. Like if you've been prepared, this, this is not a scary time. This is actually an exciting time. This is an opportune time to take advantage of and really look with faith, not with fear. 
Got it. So let's let's start right there. You said a phrase if <laughs> you've been prepared. Uh, what does that mean? What does prepared mean? How would someone listening know that they have been prepared? And more importantly, if they're not, how can they put themselves in a position to be prepared for the next one, whatever that might be? You know, like, like I mentioned, that recession kicked the crap out of me about a decade ago, right? <laughs> you and, uh, and only 2,000 people who are listening right now. <laughs> that's right. You know, so that taught me a lot of lessons. I, I learned never, ever to just rely on one or two or even three streams of income, right? Because you never know when those can get shut off. You know, like I've got a lot of clients are di- Yeah, like I've got a lot of clients that are dentists right now saying, all right, I'm, I'm at home. I'm getting lots of sleep, but I can't do anything. Like, I can't work. You know, mm-hmm. like, and uh, some are doing better than others. The ones that are doing better, are the same ones I, that realize what I realized, right? Which is you've got to have multiple streams of income. So when they've got their other, you know, investments, whether it be real estate, rental real estate, you know, turnkey, it could be short-term rentals. It could be all kinds of stuff, right? Syndications, whatever, that's now paying them, you mm-hmm. know, cash flow. Whether mm-hmm. they're working or not, there's so much of a different piece level that comes with that, Right. And that's, and that's kind of what I did too. It's like, I made sure the last decade, okay. I was going to build those multiple streams of income in to the point where, you know, when I was February, I was last counting. I was like, okay, I'm about 16 different streams. I think I'm okay. Uh, Cause even if two or three or four get shut off, we still got the other dozen. Right. And uh, I think that's the thing that's fun about this t- kind of time. I don't, I don't enjoy those that are suffering. But I do enjoy that I'm not the one suffering this time and that there are several other people now that have come with me that aren't suffering too. Exactly. Totally understood. Yeah, it sounds like you just learned from a previous mistake. <laughs> yeah. You chose not to make it twice. So you, you mentioned the concept of multiple strings of income. I tend to say not having a single point of failure. Yeah. Uh, I guess the, the question becomes, I mean, I'm sure there's people listening wondering, Okay, well, I wasn't prepared, Chris. What do I do now? You do whatever you can, right? Like the worst thing that happens in this kind of situation I'm seeing is that some people just do nothing. They're like, yes. they're, they're almost like numb, right? They're just been mm-hmm. smacked so hard. They're, they're stunned. It's, it's like somebody just whacks you across the head and you're like, what just happened? And, and the biggest thing I'm seeing right now is like, there's two areas that people aren't taking advantage of their money right now. You know, okay. One is, their retirement plans or mutual funds, stocks. Like if you have money in a stock market, what the heck are you doing? Like seriously. And people that think, oh, well, this is the best time because my financial advisor said throw more money in because it's the dollar cost averaging, right? I should put more money in because it's on sale. Mm-hmm. It's like bull crap. When have you ever known a recession in the stock market to bottom out in one month? <laughs> <laughs> Never. Mm, it sorry. takes at least two, three years before you hit bottom. So when people are like, oh, I'm going to throw more money in, it's like, oh, let me just take a dollar bill, flush it down the toilet with my beautiful gold toilet paper and flush more dollars down with it as it goes down, right? You it's- got gold toilet paper, man? That's not even fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the bamboo stuff ran out and that stuff, you know, that chafes. You know? <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. I got I to gotta ask you this because I've been asking people randomly. Um, can, can you even tell me why toilet paper, right? Uh, disinfectant, <laughs> I understand. Cleansers make sense. Yeah. Toilet paper. Do you like why? Dude, perceived scarcity, right? Like <laughs> it's still toilet paper. It's still toilet paper. You know, I I know it's like it's no more different than you buying, you know, meat, buying bread, whatever else. Like we need all that stuff, but oh, meat and bread make sense. That's food. Yes. It's still toilet paper. You don't need it. <laughs> Not that many. It's you just exactly. anyway, whatever. I digress. You get my point. It's just yep. crazy. We do crazy stuff. And mm-hmm. when we're under stress, we do even crazier, crazier stuff. So then the question becomes, what is it that I guess you're helping people guard against doing now that maybe they did lose their job or they lost one of their streams of income or all of their income or just the fact that they're feeling whew, so many emotions right now? Yeah. I'll tell you three things I'm going to tell people to do. Get lean, mm-hmm. get liquid, and get out, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it. I mean, Go definitely get lean. Those for me. 
Yeah, I mean, get lean, obviously, like, you know, make sure you're tightening the belt, make sure we're controlling expenses, whatnot. Some of it's naturally happening because you're not driving as much and whatnot. You might not be eating out as much, those kind of things. Sure. But I'll tell you, the Great Depression was a great lesson because there were people that did go broke during the Great Depression, but there's a lot of people that prospered too. And some just weathered it, right? Some weathered it because they got lean. They tightened the belt a little bit and they just made it through. But other people prospered. And the ones that prospered, the big difference is they were looking for opportunity. They did get lean. They did figure out, like, how could I reduce and cut, trim the fat, basically, right? Like, we need resets like this to help people get a reality check and wake up. Uh, Mm -hmm. But then you got to get liquid, right? I mean, you got to get lean, but you got to get liquid, too. Cash is essential. So, it might mean that you get out. One of the things you might get out of would be the stock market. You know, you might say, hey, maybe this is the time to get rid of it. If your job was affected by, the, by what's happening right now with the virus, hey, you know, 401ks, for example, and IRAs, you can cash out up to 100 grand and avoid the 10% penalty if you've been affected by the virus. Mm-hmm. What, a, what an opportune time to do that now, you know? If, but, but, but hold on, Chris, let me play devil's advocate for a second because yeah. here's what I know someone is saying or thinking, but I, I, it just went down 30, 40%. Why would I sell it now? Because it's not the bottom, just like I said a few minutes ago, right? Like it never hits the bottom in one month, right? What if it goes back up, Chris? What if it does? What if it doesn't? You have no clue. (laughs) You're gambling, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. I get you. I get you. But I just know that somebody somewhere, that's what they're thinking. Oh, yeah. So if I do get out, what do I do with the cash? Do I just stare at it? Look at it? What do I, what do, I do? That's one thing you could do. I mean, that's always exciting, right? You could wipe with it too. I mean. Hey, <laughs> toilet paper again. <laughs> that's anyway, right. We're good. We're good. <laughs> no, okay. Moving on beyond the potty humor here, right? But uh, no, seriously, I mean, like one is just having cash on hand. I mean, cash reserves. Mm-hmm. Make sure mm-hmm. first and foremost, you've got at least six months of expenses that you can weather through anything, right? Okay. Um, two, uh, if you have a business, make sure you have at least a few months of expenses through that because- who knows if even if you're trying to apply for, you know, PPP or whatever other kind of, you know, care act money you're trying to get, we don't know if it's going to come in the right timing or fashion that the, the people that are going to fact, you know, it's not going to come in the right time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is the one thing you can count on. <laughs> that's right. If there's a, if there's one thing that's not a gamble is that uh, money never comes from the government in the time you expect it. Right. Correct. <laughs> I guarantee that I'll take that bet every day because that is not happening. <laughs> that's right. It'll get there eventually when they feel like it. Yeah. And I'll tell you another thing too. Another way to do this um, yes. is, uh, I mean, it just again, having that cash on hand is key, but I mean, the, the stuff you're teaching right now, if you've got time, work okay. on it. Like start, start figuring out ways to create money. Could it be doing things with short-term rentals? You know, could it be in dealing things with real estate? Because I'll tell you, I trust real estate a heck of a lot more than a stock market that I can't control. You know, what's funny is that I've been telling a lot of people lately, because there's a term that uh, has been thrown about and everyone's learning completely different things. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have previously may have thought of your business as something your customer needs, but now the real question is, is your business essential? (laughs) And housing is very essential. And a lot of, I think a lot of people are learning that right now. Was that something that you were thinking about last time or when it came down to, uh, the recession, 08, 09, that time? You know, not in this very terms, but it was like looking at real assets, right? I mean, I was out of the stock market by the recession. You know, I was glad about that. But the thing I didn't do is that I had cut off income streams, passive income streams right before the recession hit. Because I started like focusing more on the active streams only of my business, right? I thought, get rid of all the distractions, focus, because that's where I should put all my time and attention, um, and even when I did real estate before, the one big mistake I made is I was focusing on growth. I was trying to hit the home runs, right? So I was looking for, I was banking on appreciation instead mm. of just looking for unsexy cash flow, right? Like monthly income, because, you know, I didn't know things like I could go and, you know, uh, not even have to buy a property in the cash flow at like what you teach, right? Like that's, that's cool stuff. <laughs> but hey, I was just buying properties thinking, oh, well, if it appreciates 10%, well, I could buy a hundred thousand dollar property, make ten grand, but a five hundred thousand property, I'll make fifty. So why not just go as big as I can? You know, go big or go home. Mm. And what happened is I went way too big. Um, had no cash flow because they weren't paying me anything, or they were negative cash flow properties, and I ended up losing them anyways. You know, and so this time around, I said, I I don't want sexy. Like I want certain. 
And I went for that. I was like, I want those streams of income. I don't care if it's like I'm buying a turnkey property. It's making me 300 bucks a month, you know, but granted, I want to make more than that. But I was like, I need more income streams like that. that just keep paying me whether people need it or not. And you're right. People need homes. What's funny to me, or at least ironic is, um, <laughs> when you said, I don't want sexy, I want certain. Mm-hmm. It is. I, I, I just find it ironic is that there are always those phases when people like fixing and the flipping and the and, yeah. and gambling, if you will, in with real estate or stock market, etc. And that's what always seems to make the news. While yeah. both of us would go, I'll just win a hundred dollars a month at a time. Be right over here, minding my own business. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> but no one wants that. So I guess, no. why do you think that is? Well, I mean, it's greed, right? I mean, greed what do you sells. Mean? Greed sells, man. Like it, it's it's like this. Like I remember even before hold the on, last hold on. recession. I don't understand. How is it greedy when you're still you're we're both getting paid? It's a hundred dollars a month versus you know ten thousand dollars up front. Well, when you get people up there, like whether it's now it's today's social media, not just people on stage, right? And they're sure. saying, "Hey, man, like this one deal I did made fifty grand." And especially on social media, I see a lot of my friends posting like just sold this property, made 50 grand profit, or here's my $80,000 check. Like that mm-hmm. sells, right? Now, mm-hmm. if I were like, hey, check it out. Like my renter paid again this month. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, made, I made an extra $200 a month or 300 or 400 bucks a month. Like I'm not going to be showing off those checks. Oh you my know? Gosh. And even if people did, they're, like, they're not going to be like loving it and sharing it with everybody. Like, whoa, look at this guy. My Chris Miles is rolling in it. He just made $257 this month. Wow. That's pretty like, that doesn't happen. <laughs> it, but it should. It should. Because it that's, I mean, you can't, I think you could make a, I know I could make a, an argument that that $250 a month is worth more than the $10,000 one time. Exactly. Well, and a lot of those people, I mean, you know, you know, these people like I do, we've been in this space long enough that those people that show those $50,000 checks probably didn't also tell you about the properties where they lost 10 or 20 grand too. Right. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Those che- checks weren't showing up on social media no. or the, the checks they were writing out, you know, that, that kind of stuff just doesn't happen. Like it, and that's the thing, like, especially when things are all good, right? When the market's always good, sure. it, it's, it's easy to show up like a winner, right? It's, it's like, it's like, get, you know, watching, you know, uh, your TiVo or whatever, you know, watching a pre-recorded game. You're like, I know how this is going to end. But when things start turning like it is now, this is my favorite time. This is when you get to see who the, who like the real players are. Versus the charlatans and the posers, right? What I've been telling people is, um, which has been interesting to me mm-hmm. because I, I, I agree with you like a lot uh, on this one, because what I was telling people that the people who are considering getting started now and all this other stuff, I was like, guys, you, you don't understand. You're asking mm-hmm. all these questions because you're concerned that what some people don't need housing or something. Yeah. I want you to understand that it was harder before. Now it's mm-hmm. easier. It is. And it, it, because it's really clear. It's so much easier. And people are um, learning that slowly because mm-hmm. at the beginning, uh, it was you just had to be present, but now you have to be good. Yeah. So if we want to be good now, what are some of the things that uh, I guess you see that are, that are here or coming that we need to be looking for so we can be good with our money? You know, you know, I'm already mentioned certainty, but I'll tell you, like, that is the key, right? It's like, what's actually going to be my base hit right now. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you that the key principle, if we were to cut out strategies and look for the principle that'll help lead us to strategy, it's always, you know, where can I create value for people? Because dollars follow value, right? You know, where can I actually go and and solve a problem or create a solution for someone? So you know how somebody will say like, you know, if somebody's desperate, that's the best time to buy, Right. Um, I'm seeing the commercial space right now. Commercial lending space is sucking because all the commercial lenders saying, Hey, 60 days, we might open our doors again. Like there's no, they're like commercial lending is run dry currently, you know? And it's, uh, it's throwing people through a loop, it, which is why I like, Hey, get liquid. Cause if you have cash that could create an opportunity where you can create some short term funds and money. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, there's opportunities there. Always be listening to where people co- are complaining or people freaking out like in desperation mode. Because yep. that is where you'll find the deal. Now, some people will say, oh, you're just taking advantage of somebody. I'm like, hell no. Like, no, I'm not taking advantage of anybody. I'm actually providing a solution by giving them what they want. 
and giving them a solution. If I were just, if I were to mess people's lives over, I would just not do anything. Just let right. them sink, you know, but hey, if it means I just had a dentist today say, you know what? I would sell my practice today for at least a 10% discount if I get to sell it now. Like I would just get rid of, of it. They would. He's like, yeah, he's like, I, I want to be done with it. I'm already burned out. It's kind of nice being at home. I would sell this thing for a <laughs> discount just to get out from under it, you know, and I don't care about going back to work when this is all blown over. Okay. So, you know what? This brings up some, some things I want to talk to you, to you about uh, and just continually talk to people about. There are some things that I think are just going to fall completely apart. Like you yeah. were mentioning commercial lending. Uh, I think the office space in, in terms oh, of yeah. real estate is mm-hmm. going to completely fall apart. I agree. Uh, I'm curious to know if there's anything else out there that you see that is like, oh, that's never coming back. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. And I'm glad that you are enjoying what you are hearing thus far. But here's one of the things that's really important. One of the most important things that you can do as get started. One of the things that I've said before, and I say again, once you get started, stay started. But more importantly, there can be lots of roadblocks to getting started. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove one of those roadblocks for you and make it a little bit easier because the thing that I don't want to stop you is thinking, do I need a local number? How about a long distance number? Or should it be 800? How on earth am I going to make that happen so that people can contact me as I'm out there building my business, making my cash flow grow, but most importantly, understanding that it doesn't have to be difficult. Many of you may know, but if you don't, there's a company out there by the name of Grasshopper. And what I want you to do is I want you to go over to trygrasshopper.com forward slash cash flow diary. Grasshopper is the entrepreneur's phone system. It works like a traditional phone system, but requires no hardware to purchase, no software to install. It's just the number that flat works. So if you are out there building that distributed workforce across many different locations, it's a way for you to still go out there and make your number be unified, simple, easy to use, something we've been using for quite some time. So again, go over to trygrasshopper.com forward slash cashflow diary. Now let's get back to the rest of the story. (laughs) Never coming back. I don't know if anything would never, but uh, I definitely agree with you. Commercial space is a big one. I'm thinking about that's where I think self storage could have a a place if they can convert some of this office space to be it again, rezoning who knows. Right. But as a possibility there, uh, I'll tell you though, multifamily is the one I'm really watching for really? because we saw so many people, especially in the last couple of years that had no clue what they were doing all of a sudden become professionals and, and like deal operators, you mm-hmm. know, buying apartments. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I really think, I mean, even though I think people are still going to be using apartments, I think there's going to be an urban sprawl. I think this uh, virus thing is going to create people to kind of leave. They're not going to worry about the inner city stuff as much. They're going to kind of sprawl out. So they might go to the more suburb. Suburb people might say, I might want to go rural because I want to be around all these crazy people. And <laughs> I want to get toilet paper when I want it. You know, I don't know. But, you know, all that, you know, whatever it might be, I, I, I kind of foresee that there's going to be a change. But I do see that uh, I, I think there's a lot of people that weren't good operators, people that were heavily in debt. Um, there's companies like this too, right? There's companies that were over leveraged. I think they're going to go out of business. So, I think corporate bonds, by the way, speaking of stock market yeah. stuff, bonds will crash. Like mm. after, there's, I think it'll be like 1987 all over again with corporate bonds. Cause there's, cause even, even before this happened, I remember hearing about uh, bond managers saying, I'm basically buying junk bonds right now. This is like 87. Like, man, if anything happens, we're in trouble. And guess what? You're, wow. We're having it happen it's right now. So I, I, so I, again, there's, I think there's so many different places where, I mean, I don't know what will happen with that place that might be completely retransformed, but I'm really excited about the multifamily space to see what happens with apartments and things of that nature to see if people are going to be selling out cheap. You know, I, it'll be interesting to, to see, I think anyone who was planning on (laughs) executing as some sort of exit strategy that required a loan of some kind, yeah, uh, going to be in for a surprise of, of sorts. Uh, So that's definitely there. And then, with so much focus, I'll say so much. It, it's like the largest uh, work from home experiment uh, ever conducted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, there are so many things that it's like, okay, let's really put the internet to the test and make sure it'll be there for us. 
Yeah. Uh, how do you see that playing out? And and for those who are looking for those opportunities, who are liquid and ready, what what mm-hmm. what do you see that's out there that could become something that maybe wasn't as big as it was before? Yeah, there's no doubt uh, telecommuting. Uh, that's something that has been way overdue. And I see more and more companies transitioning to that and saying, wait, I can shrink my office size because we don't have to keep our staff here. We can send them all home, let them pay all the bills and we can create more profit, right? So I think there's definite opportunity for those businesses that will adapt, right? The ones that mm-hmm. feel like they have to be on site. Um, and then there's, I even heard of a CEO that was arguing with his executive staff about that same point just a few weeks ago you know, mm. a tech company of all things. He's like, no, we should be all here together. They're like, no, they don't even want to be here. No. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, transportation is going to be interesting in how that changes, right? Because, um, I mean, for like example- Public transportation? What do you mean? Uh, transportation, like, pu- okay, yes, public transportation, I think for one, but I think also even just cars, um, the automobile industry is going to be, have an interesting effect. Explain, what do you mean? Yeah, in a negative way. <laughs> Okay, I'm 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 curious. Uh, you know, like, like for example, know. Tesla, uh, Tesla right now they're they're having issues because between gas prices falling and people not driving, no one cares about buying electric cars right now. Like they're <laughs> they're almost like at the point where they're stop manufacturing electric cars. And remember, a few years ago that was going to be the thing, right? Like even when Obama became president, it was like, hey, we're going to go all electric or hybrid. You know, we're going to go wind power, solar power, and hmm. and now people are like. Well, man, my gas prices are like a buck fifty a gallon, and I'm not even driving. So, why? Why would I pay more for that, right? Hmm. So, I, I that's why I say, like in transportation, like I wonder what's going to happen as a result of this. Will people go back to driving as much as before? Will they maybe not fly as much? I don't know. I, I personally would want to fly more. I, I actually like when people don't fly. I want to go do whatever people don't want to do. You know, that's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I hadn't thought about the effect. I didn't, you know, I, I don't know that I perceived any particular effect on the auto industry, but it, it probably, I, well, I, I know the financing of the autos will be <laughs> kind oh, of yeah. different, but I hadn't thought about would people still want to drive after, after this. And yeah, that's an interesting thought. So here's the thing. There's a number of people who, you know, they're, they're experiencing this, but they're experiencing it as, Chris, this happened to me. Mm. There was, wh- what are you talking? In fact, they may even be upset at you right now. Like they've listened to this part, like, why is this dude happy? You're not <laughs> supposed to be happy right now. You're supposed to be crying with me. <laughs> what, what would you say uh, to, to those who might feel like they're in that particular place? You're exactly where you're supposed to be. You know what? Like, <laughs> I I would not have learned the things I had learned had I not gone over a million dollars in debt, $16,000 in the whole each month during the last recession, right? Um, I wanted someone to bail me out. I was Mm. hoping for it, but nobody was there for me. You know, like- You neither? (laughs) No, (laughs) it's weird. (laughs) Nobody paid my bills for me, you know? And (sighs) that was the best thing that could happen, you know, because I had to get resourceful and creative. And that is where the real wealth happens. It's not- about how much money you have, although that helps, mm-hmm. it's really about what goes on between those two ears of yours, right? Like how you can use your brain to be resource, resourceful and find money. You know, because like when I dug back out of it, I had to dig out with no savings and no credit, right? Um, I, yeah, I foreclosed on my house. I lost my house. Um, I ended up like turning in my car keys for my Mercedes. And I said, here, take it. You're going to take it back anyways. Take it before you just have to force it from me. And, uh, and then I had a $30,000 debt that they're calling on collectors saying, Hey, can you pay this 30,000 bucks? I said, if I could have paid that, I would have kept paying the $1,200 a month payment. You know, <laughs> I would have kept the car guy. Yeah. No, totally understood. You know, like all that stuff like that, that even though it's so sucked and I would never want to go through it again. Right. Um, it still shaped me and molded me to be who I am today. And uh, so the best thing you could do is kind of take a breath, realize that you're not alone, that others of us have gone through things like this and that there are answers, you know, there are solutions. There are always opportunities. You will not miss out on some big market boom, although you might a little bit. I mean, I missed out on the real estate boom, right? Because I was selling off real estate. I was the one selling off to somebody else for cheap, you know? Um, I could have been on the other end of that, but there's always going to be opportunities. There's always going to be a way to create wealth if you understand the right principles. 
right? And understand that principles govern first, that they never change. Those same economic principles, you know, if, you know, it's just like when you talk about supply and demand, it, it comes right back to how do I create value for people? What do they want? What do they need? And how can I deliver that to them? And you will never go broke when you focus on that, even if you are now. Because <laughs> right. again, I was in the whole 16,000 month, had no savings or anything. And people are calling my phone repeatedly throughout the day, collecting on me. That was the thing I had to obsess over is, all right, how do I solve problems? How do I get resourceful? How can I get people what they want? Whether it be through your main business or job, or it's being through the investing side. And I think uh, when it comes down to it, right now, that I think that's the skill set that you yeah. were forced to learn is to be able to even see problems first of all, yes. and then because and here's the question: There's probably a number of people listening who who can see a problem today. Mm-hmm. But the, their question would be, well, but Chris, how do I become or be like, who's going to let me solve their problem? <laughs> Good question. Well, who are you? You know, what do you have to offer? I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to is what do you have to offer? I mean, if you say, hey, I see you have a problem. Great. Do you have a solution for me? No. Well, here's the other option. I'll tell you, this one is awesome. Uh, this, this is actually one of the ways I created multiple streams of income, right? Okay. And I did through my business was... And I don't know with you, Jay, actually, we've, we have this agreement personally is that I send you referrals, right? Mm-hmm. And I get paid if people buy your program, you know, what, so obviously I'm not going to be the one doing short-term rentals. So if someone says, Hey, Chris, like, who do you know that can help me figure out short-term rentals? I already know if they do it on their own, it will cost them way more money than if they got the education <laughs> to do it. Mm-hmm. So I'm, but I'm not the guy, like I'm, I'm not the guy that's the master at doing that. So I don't feel qualified to do it, but I know you are. And so I'm like, great, let's work out a deal where I can create a win, win, win transaction, right? Where it's a, it's a win for you, obviously, Jake, because I'm connecting them to you, right? It's a win for them because they're getting the right education. They're getting the tools necessary to do that and succeed. And of course it's a win for me because I'm the middleman, right? Well, then at the end of the day, you're, you're basically saying something that I've said many times that some people get mad at me for, but I don't care. It is simply that (laughs) no one has a money problem. You have an idea problem. Absolutely. Yep. If so, you can't solve it, who can solve it? You know, I mean, just, I, and I guess you and I, we're, we're, we're literally having the same experience right now through this time, because it's like, I'm, I'm actually more like, like you, I'm busier than I was before <laughs> doing more. There's more to be done now. It's like, wait a minute. Did that just happen? Let's <laughs> go. Let's go. It's go time. That's what just happened. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it. And yeah. I, and I'm just curious. I I feel a sense of like, wow, this is, I feel like it's like, it feels like deja vu. Like, is this really happening right now? Cause I know what to yeah. do and it feels weird. I, has that been something that you've been going through at all? That's a great way to describe it. <laughs> That's exactly what I've been feeling. Yeah. It's like, it's kind of like I've been, I've been made. I've been made for this, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, okay. This is awesome. Is that why I went through all that? Totally understood. And I think it helps to know that sometimes the, the things that you are going through, they do have a purpose. You just don't know, and you just got to just keep mm-hmm. moving forward. So, for those that have been listening, those that want to find out more, what's going to be the best way for them to catch up with you? You know, great way you mentioned already the, the Chris Miles Money Show my own podcast. Like I teach so many different concepts, different strategies and whatnot. But again, coming back to the core of how do we really create wealth? Right. And that's, that's what I talk about. It's not just like, Hey, here's the stock to invest in. It's like, here's the core principles, you know? And then from there also there's my website, moneyripples.com where I've got a lot of that stuff there too. Yeah. Totally understood. So um, as we wind down, when you look at I, I you know the world today and you're, you're seeing what you see. If you were able to talk to the, you know, the previous Chris <laughs> and those who feel like they're, you know, that they are you right now, mm-hmm. what would you tell them? Yeah. I'd be like, Hey Chris, you remember that time you said, Hey, I know that there's a purpose behind this. I just don't know what it is. Like there's gotta be a reason behind my pain that will become a better gain, man it's better than you thought it was. You know, I, I remember thinking back then I thought if, if my pain just meant I could help one person, right. Like give, inspire them with some hope mm. that if I can get out of this, 
they can too. Or if I can prove that I can retire the second time, right? Because I'd retired in 2006, was out of the rat race, got back in the rat race in 2007 and eight and nine, and then got back out again. I was like, if I can do that twice, I've now proven something that works, not just on a whim, right? And, uh, and now just the, how, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of people I've, I've been able to influence and help that it just blows my mind. Like it, it's, it's way better than I ever imagined it would be. And, and I'm sure I'm going to be saying that to myself in 10 years from now too. Like, crap, you didn't even know that ripple effect. And that's why I called it money ripples is that ripple effect that creates through people's lives and throughout the world. Like we can be a positive difference and change in people, not because we talk you know, about politics or whatnot. It's about really changing people's lives of the core fundamental of prosperity and wealth. You know, man, I love it. 100%. Uh, I, I encouraged uh, to hear uh, the attitude. I'm encouraged to hear that you're helping I, and encouraged that you are encouraging others uh, to do the same. And I just, again, want to say thanks for stopping by to share your knowledge, wisdom, and insight here with us today at the Cashflow Diary. It's been such a pleasure. I appreciate it, Jay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to go listen to another podcast. Why? Because there are more ways to skin this cat. There's lots of opportunity in front of all of us. And here's what I will say. There's one opportunity that is uniquely designed for you. And if you can't see it yet, then that's another reason you need to keep listening to Chris. You keep need to putting more of the right ideas inside your mind, because as he said, it's between those two ears. That's where the difference is going to be made. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time. 